Hey guys, it's uh, 10.45 a.m. 6.5, 2020. Um, this is my take on the market today, so... And this is, you can take it for, for what you like, but... This rejection candle on S&P 500, I mean, we've had a monster move. And it's almost like, we call it the chameleon market, the stages of denial, if you're a bear, with this being a true bottom. You have the first move, but then you have the macroeconomics that look un unbelievable. White swan event, right? We could see it coming, but we didn't really see it coming. And it tore through the economy like nothing we've ever seen before. Now, as we started to push higher with whatever, the short covering, the, the fear of missing out, that it could possibly be a bottom. And then you have the naysayers, which add to the you know fuel to the fire because they're shorting the market looking for the rejection and the drop back down, looking for the drop back down. Excuse me. <coughs> As we grind higher. But for some reason, the market tends to be, tends to know what's going on. I don't know how, but it always tends to know what's going on. Now, the market could be wrong in the bigger sense, in the broader sense, and this move was all for nothing, and we'll start to see that but it's going to take some time to unfold a couple quarters of earnings. You know, is employment coming back? Those things are going to take time. But for now, the addition of all the retail investors, the denial by the hedge funds, the shorts in the market, the massive short positions, the head and shoulder bull crap that we saw that we that people have talked about breaking <clears throat> the neckline, which I didn't see, by the way. But now you have the bears just throwing in the towel. We talked about it yesterday. They just capitulated. And then you have the expansion that we're seeing on the oscillator, which means that they feel like, okay, all these things have moved so much. What do I got to get into that hasn't moved yet? And they reach back down. And we talked about it, buying the cruise lines, buying real estate, buying airlines, buying the financial, the stuff that had not moved. And we talked about if those things get moving, man, this thing could really start rocketing to the upside. And you can see it in the McClellan Oscillator that we've been really keeping an eye on. Instead of breaking down off the channel rejection, there's your RSI. Now we're finally getting into some areas of overbought. So I actually bought some TVIX in the 106s today. Um, I've been buying and selling it for a while, but today is a buy and I feel like it's a little bit more of a hold. Whereas the few, last few days I've been buying and selling it into strength. So here's the breadth that we talked about on the oscillator. We've got the rejection now. Were we going to roll back over? In fact, this was the area that we were worried about. When we bounced off the high and we were making higher highs but lower lows on the broader averages and failing as the market continued to kind of go sideways to high, that was a worry. But once we got back to the red line, we said, okay, are we going to hit here? And then break back down below the red line? Or are we going to push through, back test it, and fire to the upside? And obviously you see what happens. So now you have a couple things going on in the market. TVIX is going up, obviously, and making money. But you see stuff like Boeing. I shorted Boeing out of the get-go. And it was a beautiful trade. A little bit lucky. And the move in Boeing, Boeing has been unbelievable. It's like, what is going on? So when you see some of the moves that we saw, and here's a chart on Boeing where it kind of broke out of the wedge, clearly powerful move, but it got a little bit overbought today, and just to, I just it was just watching it intraday and saying, okay, this market looks way too FOMO here. It looks like almost like a capitulation bottom, but in reverse, right? But that doesn't mean the market is done here. It does not mean the market is done, that this is it, that you know, that this was just one big bubble high. It just means that the market probably had it right the whole time and you just got everybody saying, I can't watch this anymore and piling in. So this could be some sort of a short term top. Does it mean that it was all fake and artificial? No, it does not mean that it was all that it was all fake and artificial. Um, actually, this is the intraday chart. And this was the move, and this shows you that this is these are legit moves. They're short covering a lot. I shorted this with a stop. It, the, my stop was literally almost got hit by ten cents, and then I covered at two hundred one fifty, which was higher than the low, which I didn't want to see. But 
um, you know, that first bounce kind of had me on guard. And then as it started to pull back, I covered and then it went even lower and then rocketed higher. And then you can see shape change here. I should have been buying this move to the upside, but unbelievable. So now you're like, okay, what's going on? Why is the VIX climbing as the market continues strong? And we see stuff like that. Well, from the bigger perspective, you see people that are, all they see is this. They don't care about the fundamentals. They don't care about Boeing's debt. They don't care about all that. All they care about is Boeing was here and then it was here. And they figure, well, I have a better chance of knowing the bottom here and, and maybe getting back up here one day, right? If this is the bottom here, or even if this is the bottom and we're playing off this 189 area, what do I got to lose? So I'd have to break back into the channel line there to be putting me on a yellow light for for Boeing, but blue sky, right? According to them. Obviously, we're going to know more about the fundamentals, but for now, the market loves this wall of worry that the excuse continues to be the virus, unemployment. Things can only get better from here, right? We've seen rock bottom, right? We've seen I know, things can only get better from here. But the timing of that psychological concept happened literally like a day ago. Like it was just like a switch just turned on and said, Okay, no more of these you know, market uh, capitulation, market crash on watch, this, that, and the other thing. This is for real. And they just threw it in and said, all, all hands on deck, all chips on the table. Let's do this. And now now it's, you know, for excuse my expression, but the balls are on the table here. And let's see what's going on. Um, weird action, though, in like stuff like USLV. I took a small position, but it's very speculative because now on USLV and although this is a leverage ETF, we're back testing the channel here, right? And I don't like that we just started a MACD crossover. We can certainly turn up from there, but if we don't hold here, it's not going to be, you know, muy malo. It's not going to be good. We're probably going to go down and retest somewhere along this little channel line in here, which means 50-day moving average probably. I have a 45. I tightened up for this. So we're probably going to go down and check out the 58. 57 area if we don't hold here. So I got a tight stop there, mostly on a close, but intraday I would want to see this go below like 59.80. It would freak me out a little bit. Hopefully it wouldn't get a reversal after I get stopped out, but that's the story on that. So TVIX, yeah, it's a little bit of speculative hedge buying, but the move in the market is so far is legit. I bought a bunch of stuff like I added to TWO last night and sold it um, into the move this morning. I bought MFA, cannot believe how high it was intraday. So I, I just had to sell it. And that doesn't mean we don't, like I said, we don't regroup here. And the overbought, oh my God, I got to get in this. I didn't catch this high though, but I did catch this bounce here. And I got out at 338, 339. Um, so yeah, it doesn't mean that this isn't a legitimate bounce. It just means all the speculation, all the guys that were buying into this before sold. And then like now, like we say, we're changing the guards where we're going to find some sort of equilibrium here and the market will stabilize who knows where because now you're having all the people that were buying on the way up selling to the panic buyers in the last few days and that equilibrium has to kind of sort out but it's also sorting out at an interesting area because we have like I said two worlds colliding on S&P 500 um, you do have the 108 uh, the I'm sorry the 318.15 candle that was kind of like an energy area of resistance. And that was right here, this candle here. The high was 318.11. So intraday it was like, okay, what are we doing here? We kind of went up through there. I think got a little bit of a short squeeze. If anybody was short and then pulled back, didn't work out. Now we've kind of sorted out the equilibrium to the top side. So now, unfortunately for the bears, it's, it's game on 324. So it's hard to believe, but yeah, the you know the short-term speculators, all these different things happening at one time, people that believed in the market, those that didn't, everything's kind of turning into one giant melting pot at one time, so you're going to get some weird swings up and down. Um, a close over 318.20 would be, would be pretty impressive. Uh, we never got the correction, leg five, we just extended um, with a blow off top, and, and this is underway right now, nothing you can really do to stop it. Just kind of step aside and you know stay with your lungs, keep your shorts off. I bought TVIX as a speculative buy. Um, if it starts to grind a little bit lower, I might just take my profit and, and call it a day because the moves here do look legitimate in the market. 
Um, we are probably going to go a little bit higher in here on the RSI before we have an issue. Remember, this is tracking the areas before the big pullback in the market. So we could certainly get up to 75, 76 on the RSI. And right now we're at 73, I believe, in change. Um, so, yeah, like I said, a, a changing of the guards here, a lot of stuff going on. I certainly don't like to see stuff like Hertz. You know, I tried to short it today. I don't even know where it's at. It wouldn't, it wouldn't let me. Um, that cannot be right. Hertz Global. Okay, that is the one year. I was like, what? Yeah, once it got near the 200 exponential, I tried to short it. Thinkorswim wouldn't let me. I was trying to do 350, 360, big, big share short, but no dice. So, just I don't like to see stuff like this. 40 cents to three dollars. You know, Chapter 11. They just people. This is just shows you the market, right? Traders are just they don't really know the fundamentals behind what's happening and they're just buying stuff based on based on price. So like I said, a bunch of different worlds at one time. Did we really see a bottom in the market? You know, extreme negativity, extreme unemployment, all these different things we call the chameleon. But have we seen a fundamental recovery? We just don't know. It doesn't matter. The speculators think it has happened and there's a lot of juice out there. The hedge fund said, screw it, I'm gonna play the game too. They bought into it and now we have a massive, massive move to the upside. It, the equilibrium will short will sort out over the next few days, um, which could leave us very vulnerable given the put call ratio is way too bullish. Uh, but like I said, you don't like to step in front of this stuff. If you have along the way, you've been smashed pretty good. So we'll keep an eye on things and we'll go from there, guys.